Hi, this is Dave Hammer. I'm an amateur blacksmith. I'd like to share with you today how I build one of the types of forges that I use. We will learn just how to build a shell. Learning to line it will be the object of another video. Please read this. This is the type of forge we're going to build. It's actually a small forge. It's only 8 inches long and 8 inches in diameter, the outside diameter. <clears throat> the burn chamber is actually much smaller. I use soft fire brick to close the openings and for the doors. I build these using oxygen tanks. I'll cut the tank into one or more sections or several sections. This particular tank, I got a forge body, an oil slack tub, which I'll build a lid for, for and a bell. When you're cutting these, please wear proper uh, clothing and eye, eyewear, eye protection. <clears throat> I use a zip disc with, with a four and a half inch angle dry, uh, grinder. Cut these. It takes a steady hand. <clears throat> Stand it up and uh, draw a line around it so you have something to follow. I set the tank in a, a C channel. This is the brand of zip discs I use. Don't buy cheap ones. It doesn't pay uses more and they're more dangerous. This is actually sticking on me a little bit. Like I say, it takes a steady hand. You're only, you're only seeing a little bit of the cutting. It actually takes quite a while to cut these tanks. They're, they're high grade steel and they're, well, they're at least 5 sixteenths of an inch if not thicker. Use a, a flat disc to be burnt. It's uh, important to do this right away. You'll end up with a razor sharp edge. Always wear gloves when you're handling these things um, before they're deburred. Put the tank away. Our forge has access to the burn chamber from both ends and from the side. <coughs> It's like, I've nicknamed this um, forge and super C. This is a flap disc. You can buy these uh, any hardware store, big box store. Don't really have a brand recommendation. We're gonna we're gonna mark the horizontal opening. Want to make those marks? Um, I'm going to make two cuts uh, two and a quarter inches apart. I'll assume that the tank is, uh, the cylinder is going to hold its shape. Sometimes when you cut these, they'll spring further open or they'll try to try to close up a little bit. It depends on how they're, they're, um, how they're made. <clears throat> this one, I think, tried to close up a little bit. We'll see that later. But I want the opening to be about two inches. And we're going to put a shelf on top of one side of that. So... Um, and the shelf is a quarter of an inch thick, so make the opening two and a quarter. Set that in the channel. Again, this takes a steady hand, and it takes a fair amount of time. You might to cut, make this many cuts on a, a big cylinder um, like this. Odds are you'll use more than one disc also. Walters are among the best. I'm sure there's other good ones out there. <clears throat> this tank doesn't spring open, and it, um, I think it closes up. We'll see that in a minute. Be sure you have protective clothing. Grab the, that's an awful cutting, believe it or not. I'll just knock that out with that um, water pump pliers. That one closed up a little bit. Again, you can see those razor sharp edges. Use your flap disc to clean that up. Can't emphasize enough that you need to do that because. If you handle that the way it is, you might as well be grabbing onto a razor blade. 
The other parts that we need to build besides that round cylinder are four lengths of uh, three inch channel, 12 inches long, a burner holder, which is four inches of a, a one and a half inch black pipe, uh, the shelf, which is quarter inch plate, I've got the sizes there, and a length of six inch channel for the base. And I also have the, um, the floor there. And I, you'll see why I need the floor, um, even though we're not gonna line it during this video, I need the floor to uh, actually know where to put the um, the shelf. This is just a spacer down there. The, the bottom channel goes a half inch up from the from the uh, table, so I just set that on there. Let's line this up, um, center it. Its first um, setup is to is to uh, actually help me <clears throat> decide exactly where I need to have that cylinder, um, so that I have the shelf where I want it. The shelf will be will be parallel to the tabletop, just like that. It'll be pushed in, welded about there. Under the there will only be one inch of thermal blanket under the floor. The rest of the um, burn chamber will have two inches to uh, get proper alignment on the floor. Um, I put in a piece of the thermal blanket, push the floor down. I want that table to be, that shelf to be just a little bit below the top of the floor, about a quarter of an inch is good. And I'm going to have to rotate that cylinder a little bit to get what I want there. Okay, so I've marked it enough so I can um, go back to where it was with the, uh, with the shelf and the, with the, cha the lower channel. <clears throat> this is the base. I'm gonna, we're going to make a hole in the center of this so I can put a um, part of a coupler in there. I have a, a one and a quarter inch coupler I've cut in half. And I want to weld that to the bottom of the tank, or the bottom of the case. Um, my forges, I, I uh, put on a pipe <coughs> and use a ped pedestal base. And I do that because I want to be able to move them around easily. To make that hole, I'm going to blow that hole out with a, uh, an arc welder. I'm just cleaning up a little area here for the ground. This piece of channel was pretty rusted. I can start the arc okay through the rest, but but I have to have a ground. If you've never seen this done with an arc welder, it might be a little bit of a uh, neat trick for you to see. Crank the arc welder all the way up. This is 225 amps, and I'm cutting through a quarter of an inch of all. Just literally blow it out. Go around it the same way you would cut um, with a settling torch. See, I've got the hole there. Have to clean it up a little bit. You can just rake the rod around the edge to widen the hole if I need to. I'm gonna, we've got the coupler close to me. I'm going to check to see that the hole is large enough. I actually come back and make two um, ears on the end of that, on each side of that, so I can weld in from the side. I'm going to weld on the, the bottom track. These C channels are used as tracks for sliding doors. I use insulating fire brick, which is soft brick, uh, 2600 degree brick. I coat them with a reflective coating also. You'll see that in the lining um, video later. Right now I'm welding this first track on and the base. I'll go around my tacket. Be kind of quick. Um, detect something like that channel. Um, you have to detect on both sides right away. Because if, you tack, if, you, if I weld it too much, like only on the right, all the welding that needed to be done, 
it would actually pull and it wouldn't stay in position on the left. So you just tack it and then I'll go back and weld it. Position the other lower door channel. You can see also that I did more cutting so that so that my channels go into the body and I do that I do that um, cut I cut little slots out for it um, so that it makes lining it easier. I have less to deal with, less unevenness to deal with. I didn't uh, videotape that when I um, did those cuts. You don't have to do them. This is the first forge I've done them on, but, but I believe it'll make it easier to line it. Okay, I've got the two uh, lower uh, C channels on. I'm going to put the floor, the, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to put the shelf on. The alignment of this is, is uh, important because I'm going to be setting brick on it. I want it level. I want it level with the level. So when I put the brick on, they don't fall off. Check it always. Pushing the, the square up against the body there and lining up the side, viewing down from the top. And next I'll measure make certain that it's a verify that it's um, parallel with the uh, tabletop. I don't use a level because the tabletop is not level. Sitting on my garage floor and my garage floor tilts out toward the outside a little bit. Tack this underneath. Again, I got to be kind of quick so it doesn't pull it. Tack it in four places. Again, the welding you're seeing me doing mostly is just tacking between these um, these video shots. I go back and I do um, enough welding to hold it, plenty of welding to hold it. I build my forges heavy. I want them to last decades. The first forge I built was out of this type of uh, oxygen cylinder, cylinder, and I built it over 20 years ago, and I'm still using it now. It's evolved, I've upgraded it, but, but it's still the same basic uh, shelf. I weld on that side and I weld on the inside also. There's, there's three beams, one on each side and one in the center, each of them about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half long. This is the coupler I talked about, I'm gonna put in there. I need to get that straight up and down. I need to get it where, exactly where it belongs, otherwise my forge would be tilted. The pipe is going to be the stick on a pedestal. So this is just a um, fabrication tool, this short piece. Actually, this short piece is probably what I'll use. It'll go down into a bigger pipe. But I line it up. Again, that's a one and a quarter inch coupler that I just cut in half. Be sure you use black pipe. Whenever you're using any of these materials welding, do not weld with um, um, galvanized, any galvanized or any coated, I think coated um, materials. Uh, they'll give off fumes when you're welding it and they'll make you sick and literally could uh, take it like a better friend I knew, blacksmith I knew that um, was a little careless and he actually got sick and did die. Somebody we miss. Welding on each side, and I take that pipe out and weld it in the center. The weld is far enough down into the coupler that I can still get the pipe in. First time I tried to put the pipe back in, I had problems because I had those little scatter balls that I had to go back and scrape off. That right there produces a lot of uh, flying debris, <clears throat> and that's molten, and it, some of it's stuck, and some of it's red. So I just had to, I just had to um, scrape them off. You can see clearly there the notches I put in for the channel. I'm putting the last um, door, upper door channel in now. This is how I square it up. 
pretty simple construction really, a lot of steps. I'm not a professional welder, I'm just a hobby person. I worked with computers my whole career. I'm retired now. Um, I've always been very mechanical, mechanically inclined. That was the prior one was the first upper door channel. This is the last one. Line it up. Make it parallel. Check it again. Hold it and weld it in place. Generally, after I tack, I'll go weld again. I'm sorry, I'll check again because to make sure it didn't pull it out of parallel. And then um, if you've just tacked it, you can knock it off. This is the, um, the burner holder, the propane burner holder. It's a piece of one and a half inch black pipe. I've drilled holes in it for the, for the little bolts that uh, I'll turn into um, to um, hold the burner in place. You notice I, I don't have a hole in, the, in that uh, case there. We're going to blow the hole in from the top. Tack it and then weld it all the way around and then come back and blow out the um, blow out the hole for the burner to go through. Just crank the, um, the welder all the way up to 225 amps and use a 516 uh, rod and start like you're going to weld and then just um, push, push, it'll melt it and push it through. See, I've gone, you can see the, the pulp there, but I'm almost done with it right now. I'm just cleaning up around the edges. Makes a big mess. Lots of smoke. This looks like I'm doing a lot of welding, you know, in a short amount of time. This video is actually shot across um, a good part of a day, so... If I had done as much as it looks like I did in 30 minutes here, I'd have had to have my door open. Um, almost all the welding's done. Go back, take your flat disc and clean up the whole thing. Make your weld look pretty. Take any sharp edges off. We'll be painting this thing with high heat paint. All I'm doing is um, cleaning it up. Scraping out those uh, scatter balls again. They're all over the place. I use a, uh, a wood chisel. I've got some wood chisels that I don't use for woodworking. I just use them for this kind of work. And this is actually going to be a convertible forge. Um, um, not during its use, but but um, it's going to be made so that the top can be taken separated from the bottom. And I'm going to do that by welding, welding two pieces of plate, one piece to the bottom and one 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 piece of plate to the top. And then I'm going to drill two holes in there and have bolts holding the two plates together. And the, the first thing I'll do is cut the um, or is weld the bottom plate on, and then I'll cut the um, Cut the forge body in half. Setting up to drill the holes. Those plates are three eighths of an inch thick. They probably wouldn't have to be that heavy, but uh, again, I like to make my stuff heavy. I don't want any flexing um, with that C um, configuration. I'll drill one set of holes first, and then I'll use this, uh, this uh, first plate as a template to drill the other. And it's drill through here, but we get the holes in the same position.
I'm doing quarter inch holes here. The holes in the end are going to be three eighths. And I shall draw these. When I draw anything larger than a quarter of an inch, I'll always um, draw a small hole first and then use the larger bit. I love that clamp. That vise. It's so easy to use. I turn that around because there's a little burr on the upside there. I didn't want it between the two pieces. Line that up. Push that back, it locks it in. I hate to think how much those uh, braces cost new. I paid a hundred bucks for that one years and, and I felt like I got a good deal. Okay, I'm gonna set up I bolt the plates together to get them in position the right position together before I weld uh, either one. I weld the, like I said earlier, I'll weld the bottom one first and then I'll take the top plate off and then I'll cut the, the forge body in two piece, into two pieces. This is the first time I've done this um, and I'm anticipating that it's going to make the lining process much easier. We'll see. I want that to be perpendicular to the table, just for looks. It wouldn't have to be. Later, I'll weld those nuts on the inside. I should have done it before this. I was thinking I'd just have loose the nuts, but, but they're up in kind of a tight place, so I decided to weld them in place. If they get stripped or damaged um, later, they shouldn't, but if they do, I can take a cold chisel and knock them off. I just uh, spot welded them in place. Keep in mind here, I'm just welding the bottom plate. Just tacking it. do a, a, a complete job of welding that. Take the top piece off. If I welded that on there now, which I could, I'd have to cut it from the inside and that might be difficult. If I take this plate off and cut it without that upper plate on there, I can, I can cut it I can cut it in half from the outside. Here I'm just completing the welding. We can watch this welding in this video, as I said earlier, I should, or put text up earlier, but obviously if you were uh, what, uh, in a shop with somebody doing this, you couldn't, you couldn't be looking at this without uh, a, a face shield on. You'd end up blind. And you can see, also you can see the uh, coupler in there. Just put a pipe in there and then slide that the whole thing down into another pipe that's on a pedestal. Okay, the bottom is welded. Just take my zip disc and go across there, back and forth until it falls apart. Simple as that. Now, when I put that upper plate on it, I just have to make sure that it ends up in exactly the same position when it's folded together. Right? And I suggest you deburr using a flap disc. I just go ahead and use the the um, zip disc to um, knock the burrs off of this. You can, but you won't get a you won't get a smooth edge. It's, it's better than leaving it. 
we should really use a flat tip. A flat tip. This is not going to be exposed, so it doesn't matter as much. But, and it won't, it won't cut, it will just be rough. I've got the forge bottom upside down and I'm putting that, the plate that's going to be welded to the top half, bolting it together. What I'm doing here is I'm um, <laughs> my rod stuck. I hate that. I left this in the video just to show you that I have difficulty with it sometimes. I'm just tacking them up to the lower um, plate. You always run the risk of um, welding the bolts right into the nuts when you do this because when, when you're welding you're actually just you're melting this steel together. So um, if you hold it in one position too long, and I've done it, I'm just making sure the bolts aren't welded into the nuts. If they were, I'd have to I'd have to break this off and drill that out, break off the head and drill it out, knock the nut out and do it again. But I've done it enough that I haven't welded a bolt in the nut for quite a while. I'm just gonna take a look at it now. Actually, I just need to set this up there and then prop up that prop up that right side, the open, the right height is all I need to do, and that's all I'll end up having to do. Remember, I said I had a two-inch opening, so a little bit of angle iron, two-inch angle iron, will work if my opening was two inches, which it is. So I just can set that on there, and it's fine. Now, do I trust it? Nope, I don't trust it. You'll see me measuring it. I want those things to be parallel. Those channels, they're, they're guides for the doors. I slide brick in there, so I'll check. They don't have to be perfect, um, but if they're with, you certainly want them within an eighth of an inch or so. And I mean, you can fiddle with it till everything's perfect, but, but um, I don't. Close well, is uh, good for these stuff. Again, I'm just tacking this at first. I've got a, this vice grip holding it so it so it uh, shouldn't move, even if, even if it tries to pull it in. So we have the bottom plate bolt welded to the bottom of the forge, and the top plate welded to the top of the forge, and they overlap two inches, and we've got two three inch holes drilled and aligned. I put bolts in there. Um, it should come into perfect alignment. I'm not a professional welder. Um, I have done a lot of welding. Um, I can I can lay a, a pretty decent bead down from the top. You know when when I have my rod above my work, putting the putting the bolts in. I'm holding these because things are hot. <laughs> I use the pliers because things are hot. You'll see when I go to pick up that thing. I'll um, generally have two gloves on. In, in my shop, I have to always consider when I'm doing anything, when I'm forging or building something, to, if I'm welding, I have to think like everything's potentially hot. Because if you don't, you're going to burn yourself. You won't remember everywhere that's hot. See, that's pretty tough. I'm going to check that they're parallel. Now, if these aren't parallel, if they weren't, they, they ended up fine. But if they weren't, I could just heat 
one of those um, things in the back, one of those pieces of um, plate in the back, heat it with a settling torch and then bend that. With, the, with it bolted together, bend it to it where it's parallel and then it would stay there. But if you do it, if you do your setup like I have here, you shouldn't need to do that. If you use too light of um, um, pieces for holding it together, then it will bend. It'll bend from getting moved around. We're going to put a handle on it. I like to have a handle on before it just... I bent this. You didn't see me bend that. That's um, half inch by one inch. That forge, is, that forge body is finished. I have one more accessory I'll put on it later, but um, it'll be like a pull-out um, holder. So I can put long stuff in it, or stuff up to maybe 24 inches long, and I don't need a separate stand. This is just um, barbecue uh, paint, high heat paint is all it is. You're not going to keep these forges perfect looking. The only reason I paint them is because they have they have junk on them. I use used materials for some of it, and there we go. Take that for, forge apart. All I got to do is take these two bolts out, and it'll be ready for lining. Doesn't take long to uh, put this together, actually, but but um, this design is a design that I came up with over a lot of years. Simple. There's nothing magic about it. There are forges that have have two sides open. I don't know that I've seen one. I've seen them with three sides open. So I kind of cons consider this my design. In the next video, we'll be uh, lining this forge. I'll be showing you how I made that floor. This is a good project. Thank you for your patience and interest in my videos. I like to share what I've learned. Thanks for watching.